Hello Sorry everyone, DJ Anderson here. I wanted to shoot a quick video today on a specific I'm tool. To convert to outlines. And this tool is the Auto Nap Blocker. And what this oh, tool is used it. for is whenever you're working with things like towels or like a beanie hat, um, where you have like a pile or it's kind of a thicker material that you need to mat it down um, so embroidery that gets uh, stitched onto it doesn't get lost, the detail. Um, that's where this tool, the auto nap uh, blocker, comes in. It lays down a, a couple stitches um, before the embroidery, and it um, just uh, keeps any of the nap from um, coming out and getting exposed so that you get a much cleaner look. And uh, even after you launder it and things like that, um, it just helps to make sure that the embroidery itself stands out and uh, recently I saw a few posts on this of people using it inside of one of the the Floriani software groups on Facebook and um, was really excited to see that people are utilizing this tool so I wanted to take a moment and just show you the ins and outs of the tool and how to properly use it and uh, if you experience any um, problems using it this will help you to get around those issues so yeah, as you can see I have the software open here and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this uh, toolbar here which I love in the new version of the software I'm going to click on the screen and I'm just going to um, type in FTCU and hit apply okay so I have lettering here and I'm going to also duplicate this and I utilize this tool quite a bit whenever something is selected I utilize these tools around the selection bar quite often they're very very handy so I'm just going to use this one right here it's going to make a duplicate and I'm just going to bring it down below it and you'll see why in a minute so I have text here and when I select it um, the auto nap tool is located up here in the kind of upper right hand corner and you'll see that right now it's grayed out so if I click it nothing happens and so this is what happens to a lot of people when they go to use this tool they'll come up here and they'll see that it's not available and the reason that it's not available is because I'm working with text and text is like kind of a group together um, object that in order to utilize the auto nap tool we're gonna have to break apart any text okay so if there's text on your screen if you go to your sequence view and you see this red T you see me down in the sequence view and it says that it's text um, this um, prevents that from working that tool so in order to get it to work I can right mouse click and I can go to break up text okay before I do that just uh, again look over here in the sequence view notice that FTCU is text it's all grouped together the moment I break up text um, the letters become separate objects okay and this is important um, when working with a tool like the auto nap blocker okay so now I'm going to select these letters and notice that that tool is now active that means that now I can use it uh, so I'm gonna click on it and it's going to create those stitches that will be sewn before the letter so the really neat thing about this tool is it's very smart so when when I worked on developing it I focused on okay so what are some of the things you have to do in order to get this to work and the first thing is you had to create this grid pattern in the background so that it would lock down mm. whatever nappy uh, material you're working with but the second of all I wanted to make it easy for everyone so I wanted to make sure that it automatically threw those stitches at the front of the line so even though we already had text it automatically threw these um, blocking stitches all the way up to the top so that it became the first object that is stitched out okay so one of the things you want to do when you're when you're doing this um, before you stitch it out 
what I do is I make sure that I put this object in the color of the fabric. Okay, so I want to, <clears throat> excuse me, I want to stitch this out um, using a thread color that's the same color as uh, the material that I'm going to sew the design on because you you want to knock down any of the nap, but at the same time you don't really want it to be very noticeable. You want it to do its job and prevent um, any of the fibers from poking through and making the design you know less clear, but you don't want it to stand out. And so you want to make sure that you you utilize the same color of thread as the material you're going to sew it onto. So let's just assume that this is going to be done on, let's just go over here, let's pick a color here. Let's say that it's going to be done on white. So I would just make those stitches white um, and then the design would go over the top of it. Okay, so that is how you can get the auto nap blocker tool to work if you're doing something like text. So now you can see that I still have this text here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here and choose prever, um, preserve as stitches. Okay, so when you load a design into the software, you have the ability to, if it's not something that's in a WAF format, let's say, you have this box that says convert to outlines. Um, you have to have outlines in order for this tool to work. So if you load a design that is in like a format other than WAF or um, that doesn't have any outlines to it, you, you must make sure that this box is checked before you open it. Or you can simply um, like cancel every time you bring in a design. I'll go up over here to a different design here. This is like one that I did years ago. You'll notice that this one says stitches that means that this one was brought in without any outlines so one of the things you can do is you can select the entire design you can right mouse click um, sorry and you can right mouse click on the stitches one at a time here and you can you can choose to convert to outlines so after you have a design open if you didn't convert it to outlines to begin with that is a way that you can do that. Select the different objects, right mouse click, and choose convert to outlines. But that's what I'm talking about. That's what it's doing um, is uh, whenever you're working with something like, like that that just says stitches next to it, meaning you open the design without outlines, if I select it, you'll notice that I can't use that tool. So I have to convert that before I can use the tool. So I would have to right click on it and go to convert to outlines. And notice that when I do that, now all of a sudden I have all these pieces here. Um, what the software did is it took those stitches or the, the what you saw is just being called stitches and it created outlines for them. So that now, um, it has something, the software has something to work with. So I'm gonna press undo really quick and go back to where the stitches is and I want you to see something because this is a great way to find out if you're in outline mode or not with objects. If I click and drag this, notice that I'm seeing like every stitch. It, it looks like um, basically the same design without the 3D view on you can see every line. So now I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna to go to convert to outlines. Now I'm gonna drag it and you see very little of the stitches now. Um, now you're seeing an outline around each letter and that's what we want, that's what we need. So that's just a visual way you can tell if you're in outline mode or not, but again, it's gonna tell you over here in the sequence view. Um, so now that I have that um, selected and I have outlines for it, notice that the auto nap blocker tool is now available. So now I can use it. So if I, if I select it, it's going to go ahead and create those stitches. So that's the thing that you need to, to know about the auto 
nap blocker. It's a great tool to use whenever you're working on towels or like a, a beanie hat. I you would have to do this a lot whenever you're working with those because they have they're so thick that if you don't put down this layer of stitches that it will actually um, all the stitches will fall into it you lose clarity um, the embroidery doesn't look as sharp so utilizing something like this really helps it so I want to show you really quick um, I'm going to go ahead and and delete this one and I just want to show you what this tool is actually doing okay so you can see the outline here that's the the nap blocker so I'm gonna go into my slow redraw and I'm just gonna drag this across just to show you um, that it's creating stitches going in um, like a 135 degree angle and then it's gonna come back and almost like a 45 degree angle basically like opposite of each other and this is what's creating the webbing and this is what's going to um, kind of knock everything down and hold it in place so that when the top stitches come in they fall right on top of it and the towel um, the nap from a towel or anything that's like a thicker material isn't gonna poke through and create the embroidery to not look as clear so yes there are other things like um, heat and gone that a lot of people use underneath embroidery for towels and that's great and I highly recommend that but at the same time utilizing a feature like this is going to extend out beyond the stitches a little bit so if you're working with a towel that has a lot of loft to it even if you use a heat and gone it's only gonna block everything underneath of the stitches but everything to the outside of it is not going to be knocked down so those that pile can actually come back over and kind of cover up the stitches a little bit so even if you use a heat and gone um, or you, when you utilize something like this you can just use a water soluble topping you don't even need it to be the heat and gone because um, it these stitches are going to keep the pile from from poking through um, so it's a very helpful tool and I'm glad to see that people are utilizing it. I just wanted to show you what happens um, when the icon isn't selected. It's typically because you you have text or you opened a design that doesn't have outlines. All you have to do, again, if you're working with text, is break apart the text um, by right-clicking and doing break up text, which you'll see if you replay this video, or converting objects to outlines opening it with the convert to outlines checked or doing it after you open it but those are the things you have to do if you're having issues using this tool so I hope this video is helpful and uh, we'll see you in the next one